Hi, I'm Karine and I am a Montessori teacher. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to 10 Montessori principles that I think are very important for parents that will help you to start Montessori at home and to understand what is it all about. Principle number one, observe your child. Maria Montessori observed children, studied their natural development, discovered the sensitive periods of learning, then created a system of education based on those observations. At home, you can observe your child to discover what he's interested in. What skill is he working on? What toys does he like to play with? One tip would be go to your child's level and observe what he sees around him. Can he see through the window or is the window ledge too high? It might be why he wants to climb everywhere as there might be not much to attract his attention at this level. Principle number two, inform yourself about the child's natural development and prepare a home based on your child's needs. Make yourself familiar with how a child develops. No matter where he is born or when he is born, a child will develop in the same way, although that is own rhythm. When you are familiar with the sensitive periods and how a child develops, a language and growth and fine motor skills, you will know at what development stage your child is at. You can then take some time to prepare a home for your child. Too often, our house is suited for our own adults' needs and we only allow our children a tiny corner of the house or a playroom. Make your home safe, of course, but make sure you allow your child to explore. Babies and young children need to explore. They need to have some freedom to choose their activities. They need to be respected, time to learn and the right amount of stimulation. When I talk about needs, it is not to be confused with wants. Quite often, our modern world with medias and marketing plots lead us to believe that we need something when it's more a want. Be mindful of the many objects that are branded as monstery and do your own research. Our children are not spared by marketing, on the contrary. You might have heard the sentence follow your child or follow your child's interest. You have to be mindful of what kind of interest your child has developed. Does he follow his natural path or is he interested by television characters because he is exposed to them? Further in this course, we will discuss in depth sensitive periods and the child development. Principle number three, encourage your child to be independent. Maria Montessori used to say that little children from the minute they are weaned are making their way toward independence. Our goal as parents is to raise children who will be the adult of tomorrow. I suppose you will agree with me that those adults should be independent and confident in their abilities. We cannot guarantee that they will be happy, but we can give them the tools to become emotionally resili resilient and, in general, self-sufficient. To encourage your child to be independent from the start, we need to give them proper tools and opportunities to develop those important practical life skills, such as dressing up, taking care of their belongings, preparing a snack, pouring a drink, and much more. They need to have easy access to what they need, and they need you to help them to do it by themselves. Principle number four, provide an orderly environment. This principle goes hand in hand with the previous one, of course. Your child needs to know where everything goes and where to find what she needs. She will thrive in an orderly environment. Maya Montessori observed that the child in the first six years learned in a very, in a very specific way. She says that the child had an absorbent mind. From birth to around six, your child's brain works in a very different way than the adult brain. At this age, a mind is like a sponge, soaking up huge amounts of information from her environment. She's absorbing everything around her, effortlessly, continuously, and without discriminating. This is what Maria Montessori refers to as the absorbent mind. This is how Maria Montessori describes the child's absorbent mind. The child has a different relation to his environment from ours. The child absorbs it. The things he sees are not just remembered, they form part of his soul. He incarnates in himself all in the world about him that his eyes see and his ears hear. The development that taking place during your child's first six years is enormously important. Children develop 85% of their core brain structure by the time they are five years old. Your child will now build on this core foundation for the rest of her life. There are two subplans of development. From birth to tree, your child explores without a predetermined goal. He comes upon opportunities. 
It is why it's so important to carefully prepare your home, as what he sees, touch, smell, taste and hear will be part of his soul. It will be the basic of his personality. Then, from 3 to 6, the child develops his will, his conscious mind. He will order, categorize what he has absorbed in the first three years. Therefore, he needs an external orderly environment to make sense of the internal chaos of his developing mind. Note that an orderly house doesn't have to be a sparkly house. As long as everything has a place, as long as you have a routine and some rituals, you will help your child to make sense of his world. Principle number five. Offer a world based on reality. Childhood is quite often associated with fantasy. Fairy tales, Santa Claus, superheroes, television characters, magic. From birth to six years old, the child is a human being in formation. He learns about the world around him. He wants to learn the reality of the world he lives in. The child has an absorbent mind and is not yet capable of abstract thought and the imagination that follows from it. Fantasy and many modern toys, for example a talking bear, are based on abstract thought. Therefore, Montessori advised against introducing children to fantasy too early. By fantasy, we mean animals that pretend to be human beings in movies and books, fairy tales and other myths and legends. The child needs to be grounded into the real world before being introduced to the fantasy world. Fantasy, of course, is also the adult imagination that we impose upon our children. It's our story, our legends and our fictions. By himself, the child without our input will most likely imitate what he experiences firsthand. He will pretend play cooking, going to the shop or cuddling a baby with more interest than pretend playing fairy. In the 21st century, it's very difficult to avoid all fantasy. The world around us is full of fiction. Advertising on passing buses, television programs, children's books and the culture of mass media. When your child is in their infancy, you may think, why does it matter? But from about three years old, your child will begin to ask questions such as, why is the bed talking? And where do the witches live? I experience it myself with my own children and in the classroom I taught too. I, thought it, I found it very difficult to stay honest with children. Sometimes we get trapped into a fantasy world, pretending and lying to maintain a fantasy that our children don't even understand. Avoiding fantasy does not mean a lack of imagination. Maria Montessori encouraged imagination to be based upon reality, because until the child is fully formed with brain, body and emotions, everything he learns is part of his reality. And it's not only Maria Montessori who said so. A study from 2009 has shown that children by 15 months of age can apply something learned from a picture book to real life and also transfer that information in the other direction. Another study from 2015 has shown that children prefer realistic stories. And a recent study from 2017 has shown that more realistic stories with human characters have more impact than animal characters. Your child is brand new to this world. He will be first interested to discover the world around him and what he is naturally exposed to. So if you go to the farm with your child, explore the animals from the farm in books and toys. If your child has a dog, extend his knowledge by learning about other breeds. Follow his natural interest. Principle number six. Less is more regarding toys and rotation is key. Let's talk about toys. As a Montessori parent, you might be keen to offer the right toys or even to invest into specific Montessori materials. When it comes to toys, less is more. You probably don't even need toys to be honest. Many parents who take this course will first notice some big changes when they declutter and pare down the number of toys that children have access to. Here in the UK, we spend more than 3 billion each year on toys. Surveys have shown that a typical child owns 238 toys in total, yet he only plays with 12 of them. That is just 5% of his toys. As explained before, children thrive with order, and less toys will help them to order their world. When children have too many toys available, they are overwhelmed. They cannot make sense of that huge number of toys, and often they will not be able to play. They will also not respect the toys they have and they will throw, hit and break them. 
They will say that they are bored, they will ask you to play with them because you can make sense of that big mess for them by directing the play. They might even be so overwhelmed that they will cry and lose their cool. Later in this course, we will learn how to choose a toy, how to present toys and how to rotate them. Principle number seven, favor natural material to refine the five senses. Children from the minute they are born learn through their five senses. A baby explores the world mainly through taste, touch and smell, the senses linked with feeding. Then vision and hearing still need to improve. Children between birth and six years old are more attuned to the senses than we are. As a newborn, a baby will recognize a mother's scent among others. A baby brings everything into his mouth. Therefore, it's important to provide material that will stimulate his senses. That is why a plastic toy has less interest than a baby rattle made of wood or fabric. Plastic basically has no taste. A plastic toy in terms of touch feels the same as another one. They are also lighter than their wooden counterparts. On the contrary, wood, metal and various kinds of fabrics will bring different kinds of feelings. Smooth, rough, grainy, cold, warm, shiny. If you choose toys made of material that is either food graded or of high quality, they will be totally safe for your children. Children discover the world around them in a very concrete way, through their five senses. It is why it's so important to give them the freedom to touch and explore. Maria Montessori used to say that the hand is the instrument of the brain and the senses, being the explorer of the world, open the way to knowledge. The education of the senses is paramount in the Montessori classroom. The Montessori education is well known for the way it helps children to refine their five senses with the help of the Montessori design material. At home, we can also provide many sensorial experiences. We will explore this further into this course. Principle number eight, freedom within limits. I am sure you've heard that Montessori is about giving freedom to your child. Freedom of movement and freedom of choice. It's about following the child. You may have the misconception that freedom means allowing the child to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. You know that you must observe your child and provide the home that suits his needs. You know that your child has an inner drive to be independent and to explore his world. To do so, he needs to be as free as possible. So yes, it's not up to us parents to choose everything for a child. We need to consider if we are a hindrance with their urge to grow. Do we provide time to our children to learn to put on their shoes? Do, you, do we provide them with opportunities to try to prepare their snack? Do we trust them to take care of fragile objects or do we shelter them? Do we do things for them because we are hurried for time? However, with freedom comes responsibility and respect for others' freedom. Here is an interesting quote from Mario Montessori about freedom. To let the child do as he likes when he has not yet developed any powers of control is to betray the idea of freedom. The young child has not yet developed impulse control and reasoning. Therefore, we, the parents, have to be the role models and have to provide the limits. We can give them freedom, but we also have to give them limits. By carefully preparing the environment, we can generally allow as much freedom as possible. Limits for the young, young children are to ensure their safety, the safety of others and respect for the environment. We keep the limits simple and consistent. When the children are growing up, we add some social rules that are important to us. We will discuss those limits during the course. Principle number nine. No rewards and no punishments. Montessori observes that neither rewards or punishments were effective to discipline children. Only inner discipline had lasting effects. Inner discipline is nurtured by a sense of responsibility. When the child is respected, when he is encouraged to contribute by working with his hands purposefully, when a child is connected to his parents, he wants to contribute to his family life to do things for himself. This situation very few conflicts arise. Natural consequences will teach children about what happens when they are not respectful. If they throw away a fragile object, it will break. If they are not good playmates, their brother will not want to play with them. What about rewards and praise? Then it sounds positive and it feels natural to be proud of your little ones. 
but your child learns to walk because he has an inner urge to do so, not because you praise him. He wants to learn the letters because he wants to read books. If we praise our children constantly, they start to do things to please us, not because they want to achieve things for themselves. Without realizing, we start to raise praise junkie children. We will become adults who cannot achieve anything without a reward. Principle number 10. Prepare yourself. Maya Montessori was talking about the spiritual preparation of the teacher. Maya Montessori used to say that the real preparation for education is a study of oneself. The training of the teacher with it who is to help life is something far more than the learning of ideas. It includes the training of character. It is a preparation of the spirit. The teacher observes the child in the classroom. She is not focused on the current behavior, but rather see what the child can become. The first role is to prepare the environment and to welcome the children with their struggles and emotions. As your child's first teacher, you also need to be ready for your child. I hope you have found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe and to click on the notify button uh, to know when I post my next video. Thanks!